Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Lockdown 23 and 1. Today, we're going to be jumping into a federal prison system to speak about Miss Goslin Maxwell. Jocelyn Maxwell. I don't know exactly how to pronounce this lady's name, but she was the one that got caught up in the whole Epstein case. If you don't know who that is, you can go ahead and do your own research. I'm not about to go down that rabbit hole this morning. But it seems like she's been having issue after issue in prison, and that's what we're going to be speaking about today. If you happen to be new to the channel and enjoy the lockup or crime-related genre, then this is where you want to be. Hit that like, subscribe, notification bell before you leave, and check out my playlist with many more videos for you to start watching today. Now, the article I'm going to be reading from today, I'll have it linked and pinned in the comment section below if you want to dive into it yourself. It's pretty long, so I'm going to try to just highlight some of the main parts of it. Maxwell has filed more than 400 complaints about her life behind bars. Maxwell has slated the lackluster vegan menu options, whined about unfair treatment, and demanded the authorities at her federal prison in Florida give her immediate access to black hair dye. Yeah, I can understand that, man. Those grays can get pretty treacherous behind bars. The 61-year-old even bagged plush hyperallergenic bedding after grumbling to staff at FCI Tallahassee. She said that the standard issue prison pillows were triggering her allergies. Who's to say it wasn't though? You know, some people are allergic to weird things. Maybe she was allergic to those old Bob Barker janks. That's just a little inside joke a lot of people don't know, but Bob Barker makes the mattresses, pillows, and certain things that go to the prison system. Not the real Bob Barker, I don't think, but at least when I was in there, we like to believe it was. Maxwell's gripes have targeted everyone from inmates and guards to a rude laundry lady in the low security lockup where she's serving her 20 year stretch. Not the laundry lady, she's just trying to help. But that is one person you don't want to get on their bad side with because, I mean, they do your laundry. Who knows what they'll do to it if you make them mad, you know? Might give them extra baggy clothes. You know, them girls, they don't like that baggy stuff. Well, maybe some of them, you know, but the majority of girls I've seen in the jail and prison blocks, they like to get that state stuff nice and tight even alter it a bit to become a little bit more attractive. She complains about the food, bedding, and when they cancel Temple because of bad weather or are late setting up her legal calls. She can file a grievance over anything. She has over 400 of them. And look, grievances, believe it or not, they can get on people's bad side. When it comes down to grievances on these request forms, the staff has to reply back with an answer. So that means they're going to have to pick up their pen and every last one that comes through, they're going to have to give them a good answer. And this is... Miss Maxwell. You know, she's got lawyers from here to kingdom come, if I were to guess. So everything has to be done by the book, and if not, they're risking a lawsuit or something. She complains about the food, the bedding, and when they cancel Temple because of bad weather or are late setting up her legal calls. The latest battle is over hair dye. Maxwell hates her gray showing through, and she's filed a grievance because they don't sell it anymore. But you know what? She might have a chance of getting this back since they already sold it at one point, you know, who knows. When she did her video interview with the British TV, she paid another inmate $200 for hair dye. And I seen that video, it definitely looked like she just hit up the parlor. Not even playing, that puppy was straightened and had plenty of volume. Maxwell's whining dates back to July 2020 when she was first locked up in the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, New York while awaiting a federal trial. Her lawyers accused prison authorities of breaching her rights by shining a torch in her cell every 15 minutes, subjecting her to invasive searches and filming her at all hours. Look, this happens to normal inmates, not just high-profile ones. Matter of fact, I was in Virginia Beach City Jail and there's a cell block that's about an eight-man block, but each cell had a camera in it watching you right i don't know if it was 24 7 i wasn't about to do something to find out if they were but this is normal activities especially the making the rounds every 15 minutes and it's not a torch it's a flashlight yeah it might be bright as hell but that's how they handle things even in a regular state penitentiary they'll come around supposed to come around every 30 minutes or so look in the cells with their flashlight make sure everything's going good but she wouldn't if you were to ask me when anything in that part of the uh, complaints because th that's just normal protocol doing your rounds with the flashlight checking on on the inmates maxwell was sentenced to two decades behind bars in june last year and the judge recommended that she serve her time at fci danbury the connecticut prison that inspired the netflix series orange is the new black 
but instead the Federal Bureau of Prisons decided she should be shipped 1,000 miles south to the sun-drenched Tallahassee prison, which looks more akin to a high school or college campus. Once there, the prickly prisoner continued to rack up the complaints, taking advantage of her job in the jail law library to file a BP-9 administrative remedy form at a rate more than two a week. Yeah, you know, if I was working at prison, she definitely wouldn't be working in the law library. BP-9 never even heard of that puppy, man. She's probably in there uh, getting coached by a fellow inmate working in the law library with her. Who knows? When Maxwell got to Tallahassee, she immediately wrote Brooklyn up for taking too long to ship her belongings. Then when her shoes arrived, she refused to hand her temporary slip-ons back to the laundry lady. That caused a big argument and Maxwell complained that she felt threatened and refused to go back to the laundry unaccompanied. Man, oh man, this is unreal. That's her in a nutshell. Every aspect of prison life offers an opportunity for her to play the victim. She creates constant drama for staff and inmates alike. Prison chiefs allegedly retaliated against Maxwell by canceling an array of weekly classes that she was hosting for all female facilities. 750 inmates, including lessons in social media marketing and etiquette. So even after all these complaints and stuff, she still somehow managed to find her way running this whole program for all these female inmates. But if you were to ask me, she's probably giving up some rubies in that class about social media. People are probably in there listening to that class like a tractor beam, right? They're not only is she probably giving up some good useful information about social media, but she's probably one of the most popular women in the prison system as we speak. Uh, a lot of these girls are probably looking at her, even though she's in prison with them teaching this class, or looking at her like a celebrity in a sense. Now, after the weekly classes were canceled that she was supposed to be leading, prompted another grievance which has escalated to a BP-10. Went from 9 to 10. God, how high does it go? Meaning a regional director will have to decide whether she's being discriminated against because of her high-profile case. Maxwell's end goal, according to the insider, is to cause such a stink that she's transferred to a different facility, preferably Danbury, where she was supposed to go from the beginning. Tallahassee's big. It's old. It's ghetto. Max has too many enemies and she wants out. Of course, she doesn't care about all the blowback the complaints will cause them. The end goal is mass lawsuits, like I said. Or maybe she really just wants to get to that other prison without having to do... You know, most people, when they want to leave a prison in the facilities that I've seen, men's prisons, state prisons, if they don't want to be in that prison no more, they're going to cause so much trouble, it's unreal. They might just stab someone really quick to get the hell up out of there. Really, man, some people would do some crazy things to get shipped off of prison. Maxwell has been at the center of countless controversies and bust-ups while behind bars and even managed to use the prison video system to give a headline-grabbing TV interview. Now, believe it or not, Miss Maxwell actually earned herself 48 hours in the special housing unit which is a prison within a prison. Tiny grim cells where an inmate's locked up for 23 hours a day with one hour out. Hence my channel name, Lockdown 23 and 1. This happened in March and was the turn of two Cuban inmates who were both thrown into solitary confinement for 47 days after Maxwell reported them to authorities for trying to extort her. Man, she's writing request forms, dropping dime in a federal prison. The two bullies found out that the strict vegan neighbor had an arrangement with a kitchen worker who would slip her extra fruit, vegetables, and tofu and thought they could use the info against her. They pinned Maxwell a threatening letter demanding $360 worth of items from her commissary allowance. But old Maxwell turned that puppy straight over to the prison authorities, breaching the strict mantra against snitching. Maxwell was living in fear of a beatdown when the two Cubans got out of segregation. One of them has since been transferred to a halfway house in Laredo, Texas, and the other was moved to a different housing unit altogether. And that's typically what happens when people have issues. You know, they try to separate and put them in different housing units, not usually ship them to a whole nother prison. The only time stuff like that happens is if there is some serious violence involved or they feel as though... Uh, you could, you got a lot of power and you're controlling a lot of inmates in that facility. They'll ship you off, try to shake and bake that whole alliance that you got going on. Maxwell will be nearly 80 by the time she's freed unless she can overturn her conviction somehow. So that's the bulk of it, ladies. Jump a little update on Miss Maxwell. And uh, it seems like 
she's keeping busy with all these request forms, right? Trying to get some things done. I think I think the bulk of it is just for her to try to get to that other prison. One thing that blows my mind, though, is that I, it doesn't seem as though she's in protective custody in no way. Don't quote me on it, though. I'm not sure if she's fully into general population. We've seen that. You know, she got into a little issue with those individuals and she went to the SEG unit for 48 hours. So that means she's probably in general population. But look, a man that has the same kind of crimes as Maxwell, chances are they're going to keep that person in protective custody, man, because everybody would try to put their hands on him. But as always, I love to hear y'all's input in the comments section, so lace it up. In the meantime, stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, you know I got plenty more content coming your way.